We're going to make a skillet lasagna that is easier to make than a traditional lasagna. I started with some onion and olive oil, of course. I'm going to add the beef and sweet sausage, one pound of beef and a, pound, uh, and a half a pound of sweet sausage, or you can use plant-based ground meat substitute and plant-based sweet Italian sausage. We're gonna break that up and let this cook out. And I'm gonna season this with a little red pepper because the sausage is sweet. I didn't buy hot sausage because I like the fennel. And a little oregano or marjoram. Now when we use dried herbs, remember to just give them a little crush to kind of wake them up from their sleepy time nap in the jar. And I seasoned the onions to get their juices flowing because salt draws out liquids. But now I'm gonna season the meat because I didn't season the ground beef at all. So as we cook, we add our layers of flavor with each addition to the pan. We already have the lasagna noodles, and I went with a traditional Italian-American lasagna noodle with the curly edges. We par cook them for five minutes in salted water, and then I cold shock them. I put them into a cold water bath to stop the cooking process. It's very important that you do that so that the pasta doesn't taste gummy or overcooked when you're done. You can also break up and substitute no-boil lasagna. So for the meat, we're going to add our garlic last so it doesn't bitter. Stir that together. Once the meat browns, give it a little drink. Give it some nice spicy red wine. In the bowl, we're going to take our fresh ricotta, sheep or cow's milk. If you use sheep's milk, you should use pecorino cheese because pecorino romano is made from sheep's milk cheese. If you use cow's milk ricotta, you should use parmigiano reggiano, the king of all cheeses, because it's cow's milk. Then we're going to throw in a bunch of fresh thyme, a little lemon zest, and a little nutmeg. And of course, our spinach. Go. I put the defrosted chopped frozen spinach into a kitchen towel, and I use the kitchen towel to wring out all the excess liquid. And then we add that to the ricotta. And we have our cheese and spinach layer. Now we need the tomato sauce that we're going to add the meat to some of it and use some of the plain tomato sauce on the bottom of the pan. So one jar of passata, which is tomato puree from ripe raw tomatoes, but tomato puree works fine too. Here are the little boxes of pomi, or you can get tomato sauce in a can, that's fine too. You need about three cups total, 24 ounces one can of little cherry Italian tomatoes or San Marzano tomatoes for texture, a little splash of stock, beef or chicken, and a few leaves of torn fresh basil. We took the tomato mixture, which never gets cooked, it's just raw. We put some naked on the bottom of the pan. This is the same skillet we browned the meat in. We took the meat and the onions, then you add it to the leftover plain tomato sauce, okay? So now it's meat sauce. I added plain sauce, a layer of pasta, half of the meat, then half of the spinach ricotta mixture, more pasta. I'm doing it all over again. This is exactly what happened on the bottom of the pan. So we have a layer of the pasta, a layer of our meat and tomato sauce, the rest, of your spinach and ricotta. And you just kind of have to gently work it with your fingertips to scatter the ricotta around the dish. You make a nice little cap with the rest of your pasta. And I like it all jagged and going all different directions so that the edges of this pasta get crunchy and crisp. I was saying to my friends earlier, I feel so depressed when I go home and cook because no one finds anything that I do <laughs> even remotely interesting there. They're just like, whatever, she lives in there, it's fine. Um, so then you put this back in the oven, of course, let it cook through, brown the cheese. 